Australian freshwater turtles are just really unique. Some of them breathe out of their bum, some of them can nest underwater, and some of them have explosive hatching. Dr Deborah Bauer knows a lot of weird facts about freshwater turtles, but much about the reptiles remains a mystery. Australian turtles have definitely been overlooked in research and conservation. Fish get a lot of attention because people like catching them and eating them. And yet turtles are really important in our rivers and waterways for helping to clean the water, acting as our garbage collectors and so forth. Dr Bauer's on a mission to learn more about the day-to-day -day lives of turtles in a bid to stop their population decline. Quite a few turtles. Her research has led her to the Gwida River near Moree in northern New South Wales. One in three Australian freshwater turtles is threatened with extinction. It's really up to us as a community to look after them. Working with the New South Wales government, her team is attaching acoustic transmitters to the turtle shells. When they swim by receivers placed throughout the Murray-Darling River system, an array of important data is collected. When a turtle swims past a receiver, that data will log the identification of that turtle. The transmitter itself will log the depth that the turtle is swimming at, the temperature that it's swimming in, and then its location. At the moment, we just don't have a great understanding of how their populations are doing in the Murray-Darling Basin. What we're hoping to get is to understand where turtles move, um, why they move, you know, and if flow is important for their movement. So we can kind of tailor how we deliver water in the Murray-Darling Basin to allow them to move critical parts of their life cycle. The team is tracking 65 broad shell and Murray River turtles. It's early days, but the project has already delivered some fascinating results. 82 detections. That's pretty good. So when we did our first downloads, we were shocked. We had these two male Murray River turtles, and we've named them Samwise and Frodo from Lord of the Rings because they basically picked up and went on an adventure. Departing a week apart on their journeys, the turtles swam at least 75 kilometres upstream in six weeks. We don't know exactly why turtles are moving really long distances. We do know that it is the male turtles that seem to move really frequently and far, whereas females tend to be more sedentary. I'm really excited about this project. You know, turtles is a bit of a knowledge gap for us. Um, we're trying to fill that at the moment. The big adventure was recorded at a time of flooding. Now with an El Nino summer, the researchers want to see the impact of a dry spell on the turtles which have been tagged. I'm really terrified about the future implications of prolonged droughts combined with extraction of water from our rivers. About 15 years ago in South Australia's lower lakes, Dr Bauer saw how rising salinity levels caused the proliferation of a tube worm which devastated the local turtle population. Lots of turtles died from the tube worm during the millennium drought. It was inhibiting their movement because it was all around their limbs and it was really heavy, affecting their mobility. And so that became the key threat and that wasn't something that we saw coming. Ultimately, she hopes her turtle tracking project will inform water sharing policy between the federal government and basin states. So knowing what the turtles require, their water requirements, and then how that's going to influence them is really important information for them to be informed when they make those decisions and know how it's going to influence the turtle populations long term. The New South Wales Minister says managing the needs of agriculture and the environment is a balancing act under the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. This funding envelope is available out till 2025. We're going to gather all of the information in that time to see what we can pick up about, you know, turtle um, migration patterns and breeding patterns. Um, and then we will look to ensure that they're funded going forward. We don't want a situation where we have beautiful natural ecosystems across northern New South Wales that don't have turtle populations in them. 
Dr Bowers says she won't stop lobbying for her favourite reptiles to be given the recognition they deserve and to ensure they thrive into the future. We'd love to see more funding go towards Australian freshwater turtles. I feel like everybody loves turtles, but we just need that little bit more investment in understanding how to protect them, how to look after them, and to understanding how cool they really are in the environment.